All right, guys, so in this short series right here, we will try to create the Nika Nika no Mi, aka the Gomu Gomu no Mi. So I've just decided to pick a different name for this one. But we will, of course, include a new Gear 5 transformation. So I was the first YouTuber to do a Gear 5 transformation video, and I'm going to recreate it and create a whole better version within this series. So stay tuned, subscribe like turn on the notifications to not miss out on any of those videos and eventually the video in which we will create the new gear 5 transformation okay guys so in today's video we will just quickly create the framework so i'm going to create a tool which is going to allow you to eat the fruit itself and then it is just going to give you some moves okay we will also create the fruit model but more to that in the next episode and yeah, so what you gotta do is that you have to insert this tool right here. Make sure that requires handless faults. And then you can call this one Nika Nika No Me if you want to, alright? Now, next thing you wanna do is that you wanna import a local script right here. Now, come on. Eat. Yeah, I'm gonna call this one Eat. And next step is to create a remote event inside of the replicated storage and call this one. I don't know, eat event if you want to. Now, let's actually call this one Dull Fruit. Come on, I'm having so many typos in here. Next step is to create a server script. Let's call this one Dull Fruit as well. And yeah, let's actually move this inside of the workspace. Let's insert a port inside of it. And I'm sorry, enable requires handle because this is, this is the uh, fruit tool. So enable it. And call this part which you have just inserted handle okay so this handle part is going to be your fruit mesh okay but since we are not going to deal with the fruits appearance yet so we will create the fruit in the next video i'm gonna leave this as a gray block okay but we will get to this in the next episode so to the fruits overall appearance so do not worry on that make sure that can collide as false that anchor is false, but it is by default. If you want, you can you can enable massless, and then put this inside of your start pack, play, and check this out. As you can see, you can you can imagine that this block is our fruit mesh. But yeah, we will create the fruit mesh in the next video, as I've already told you. Now, next step is that you go inside of this local script, and then you want to do script parent activated connect function. And there we go. So what happens right here is that we are referring to the script, which is this eat script right here. Okay. So this one refers to the eat script. The parent refers to its parent. Now, if you if you click on this one and if you go to the properties tab, you can see that the parent is Nika Nika no Mi. So this one. Okay. Now, dot activated is an event, and this event happens or is triggered when you have equipped this tool. And when you have performed a left mouse button click, that's that's basically what dot activated is. Now, once you have an event, you want to do connect. So call on connect function. So just copy this, and then you can put some code in here. And this code is going to happen once this tool has been activated. Okay. Now, I could print out something, but more importantly, we want to fire service remote event right here. So game get service replicated storage double fruit. Pyre server, eat Nika. Now, let me explain this quickly. So, game gets us replicated storage. So, this whole part right here refers to this one. And then, wait for child refers to this one. And call on fire server. Basically, fire server this remote event. And this fire server right here is going to lead to a reaction of this script. So, of the stealth fruit script. So, that's basically how you communicate from client to server by using remote events. And we can now take this reference to this Dull Fruit remote event and do on server event. So this on server event is an event which happens when this remote event right here has been fire server. And this remote event is being fire server once you have activated the tool. So we have just written down this code and this code is responsible to fire server this remote event right here, all right? Now, when you fire server this one, this event right here is going to be triggered and then this reaction is happening. So this reaction I was just talking about. Now, when a remote event is being fire servered, we automatically receive the player who has fire servered. But we can also receive a bunch of other arguments. 
For example, we have this one right here called eat Nika. So I'm going to call this one what because it, it, it literally tells script what to do. Okay. So if the task is to eat Nika, then we want to do some stuff which does that. Okay. Now, what, what happens when you eat a double fruit? So first of all, let's quickly go through this. First of all, an animation is being played. So an eating animation. That's the first thing. Secondly, all of the moves are being cloned inside of your backpack. Yeah. And the third one is that the tool disappears. So those those are the three main things we now have to do inside of you. Now, in my previous Double Fruit videos, I have played the animation on the server. You can do that if you want to. But if you really, really, really want to optimize your game, you can do this on the client as well. So let's add a local script inside of here. Let's call this one Double Fruit Client uh replication okay so if you're not aware of this concept of replicating things on your client which you would have done on the server formally then check out my video on that so i have done a video on it i i can't really remember the name but it was something about performance boosting your roblox games but you just check out my channel okay so i'm explaining that concept in there so it is recommended to handle stuff like the effects whatsoever on your client rather than on the server okay i don't know if if uh handling the animation is going a bit too far but you can do that if you want to but uh, but i'm going to show you how to do it so what you want to do is that you want to refer to this remote event right here and then you want to do fire all clients and then eat nika enum and then basically the player okay so not aware of this concept as i've told you watch the video if not then i'm just gonna briefly explain this so you're now fire clienting okay so we have fire server it means from the client which is our tool right here to this remote event and then to the server so basically from client to server now when we when we fire client we basically communicate from server to client all right now we have a difference right here from fire client to fire all clients. In this case, we are fire to we are firing to all clients, so to all players, okay? And we are doing that because we want every client right here to replicate that our player right here, who has fire served formally, is now eating the sneaker. And by eating, I mean that the animation is now being played, okay? So what we want to do right here. That we want to add an animation. We want to call this one eating. And this local script is important later on as well when we are creating all of our moves. Because when it comes to the moves, we are going to use this client replication method, all right? Because otherwise, the game wouldn't be fully optimized. Now, what you want to do is that you want to take this reference of this remote event again. And then you want to do on client event, connect function. There we go. Now, as you can see, we have two arguments right here. The first one is our what again. Wait. So I was AFK, didn't know where I left off. So this is our what, and this is our second argument, right? So this principle right here works vice versa as well. And this second argument, so this one is important, is the player which everything is being replicated on, all right? So when we speak of moves or other things we want to replicate, so let's... Let's pick the moves as an example. So when we want to replicate moves on a client, then there is this performer of a move, okay? And it is pretty, it is not pretty, it is very important that you mention this performer, okay? And this player right here, so the player who has fire servered and wants to eat the sneaker is the performer of this eating animation, all right? So that's the idea behind of that. So what we want to do right here is that we want to add what and performer. Now, if what is eat nika enum, then, so if that is the task that we want to do that okay now local loader performer character humanoid animator load animation script eating now loader play okay so this animation right here is empty but we are going to fill this one in the next episode and yeah so we are only going to replicate this animation right here. But furthermore, as I've already explained to you, we want to clone all of those moves. So let's create a folder. 
inside of the replicate. I'm not sure yet. Let's actually put it right here. And let's do the following. So for Ivy in pairs, script parent, Nika moves, get children, do. So what happens right here? is that we are now looping through this folder okay this folder as for now is empty because we do not have any moves inside of there yet but as as you guys know we are going to put some moves inside of there by further progress of this series okay now script parent nika moves so we are basically getting everything which is inside of here v is the value i the index so if nah not if um wait local move v clone if V is disabled. Wait. Yeah. Then V disabled false. Come on. Move. Parent. Player. Backpack. There we go. And one last thing. If player character find first child nika my god there we go then we want to destroy this one oh my god it is so funny come on yeah there we go okay now what happens right here is that for each move we are looping through right here we want to clone that move we want to put it inside of our player's backpack. And we want to make sure that it is not disabled. So if V is disabled, then we want to make sure that it is not disabled anymore. And after 1.5 seconds, we want to destroy the tool. Okay, so this double fruit tool. So to do that, we have to refer to our player's character. And we have to we have to look out for something called Nika Nika no Mi. So basically the name of this tool. And if it exists, so that's basically what this check is here for. It just checks whether this thing exists or not. And if it exists, then we are referring to it and we are destroying it, okay? And that's it. Now, in the next episode, I plan on creating the animation itself, which is fairly easy. And apart from that, we are going to try to create the Gomu Gomu no Mi, aka Nika Nika no Mi, fruit model. All right, guys, with that being said, enjoy the next episodes.